Yo, what's up guys, it's Jeff from Updated and today we are talking about iOS 15.1 and what you guys can expect from this upcoming release. So when is this update going to be released? What changes should you be looking for? And what are the new features that this update will bring? Let's get into all that in today's video. Before we get started, I just wanted to give a massive shout out to Trend Micro for sponsoring this video. Now I've been using Trend Micro's Cleaner One Pro on my Mac Pro lately because I've noticed that I've had a lot of junk files and a lot of built up editing files that need to be deleted. With Cleaner One Pro, it's as easy as running their Smart Scan tool, which scans your drives and gives you a ton of data on what needs to go and how much space junk files are actually taking up. You can also use Cleaner One Pro to uninstall apps from your computer, erase documents securely, and even sniff out those duplicate photos in your photo album so you don't see doubles when you're going through that photo library. Now, my favorite feature is the disk scanning tool, which gives you a visual representation of how much space specific files on your computer are taking up. And it also makes it super easy to identify and delete those files when you want to do some cleaning. So if you guys want a cleaner, faster, and more organized computer, definitely check out Cleaner One Pro via the link in the video description below. Okay, so as for a release date, if you look at the past history of iOS releases, uh, the initial release of a major update like iOS 14, 13, or 12 never really lasts that long without subsequent updates coming uh, very shortly after with bug fixes. Now, with that said, we've already seen iOS 15.0.1 and 15.0.2 coming out with those bug fixes. But when it comes to the next major update, Apple's always been very quick to come out uh, with that major update soon after an iPhone release, because typically that release uh, or that update either enhances or brings the new features that Apple advertised uh, for that specific device in their September event. Now, in the past, we've seen that typically Apple releases a 0.1 version about a month after an initial iOS release. And given we've had the new iPhones now for almost a month, and then we've also had the iOS 15 release for quite some time now, I'd say that the date for an iOS 15.1 release is very, very soon. Now, Apple did just today announce their October event for uh, likely the new MacBook releases, and that date is October 18th. So with that being said, I do expect the official version of iOS 15.1 to either be released uh, this week or the week after next. That way, the iOS release doesn't overshadow their event for the Mac and vice versa. Okay, so as for uh, new features and changes, there's actually quite a bit going on here with iOS 15.1, and we'll start off with uh, the more universal features and then the ones that will really be useful for all of you iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max users out there who recently picked up your devices. So first up is a new feature for everyone called SharePlay. Now, SharePlay is a new FaceTime feature that allows you to share your screen with the individual you are FaceTiming with and also allows you to essentially show them how you are navigating your device. Now, the user on the other end of that FaceTime call uh, can only view your screen, so it's not uh, like they can control um, your screen and your device. They can only see what you are doing. Now, this new feature also allows you uh, both on the call to share content and watch videos together and also allows you to listen to music together all in real time. So this is actually a pretty cool new feature. I think a lot of people are really going to use the screen sharing feature, not so much the media sharing, but I can see where the media sharing would also come into play should third party app developers uh, kind of develop their apps for that feature. Now, next up is the COVID vaccination record being able to be saved into your Apple wallet. Now, obviously with vaccination cards becoming a bigger deal these days and the need to show proof, it's always nice to limit what you carry around like that extra vaccination card. And if you already have your phone with you, why shouldn't you be able to use your Apple wallet for that purpose. Now, Apple's added that ability in iOS 15.1, and now you can go sign in with your medical provider who has that vaccination information and status on hand, and you can get that verification card and have it stored onto your Apple wallet for quick proof of vaccination. Now, the next cool feature is lossless audio for your home pods. And to access this feature, all you need to do is go into the home app, head over to the home icon and select 
home settings from that dropdown. From here, you want to go to uh, the main user of the home and then go down to the media section where you actually find the Apple Music menu. Here you'll find a toggle for lossless audio, but please be advised that this is only for Apple Music and unfortunately third-party devices haven't gotten this specific new feature as of yet. This does, however, mark that uh, not only have HomePods gotten lossless audio in the past, uh, we've also seen uh, lossless audio coming to the AirPods Max headphones and then also the AirPods uh, Pro headphones as well. Okay, so moving on to more of the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max specific iOS 15.1 features, and there are two major ones that you really need to know about. Now, the first is Auto Macro, and this toggle can be found in the Settings app under the Camera menu. This new feature will allow your iPhone to automatically detect when it needs to go into macro mode, making it very easy to quickly snap those macro shots since there really isn't a toggle or menu option for macro shooting specifically in the camera app itself. Now, the next new feature is ProRes video shooting, and this is one of those super awesome and rare camera features that we really have never seen on a phone before. Now, ProRes is a video shooting format that essentially records more information, which gives you better overall quality and more range to work with when you go back and edit that video and change things like, uh, let's say, color temperature, highlight, shadows, etc. Basically, there won't be as much fall off or quality loss when you change those settings. Now, to enable this feature initially, you have to go into the settings app and then onto the camera menu. And in that menu, head over to the Formats tab. And here you'll find the toggle for ProRes, but you do also have to go into the camera app when you want to shoot in ProRes and select that option from there as well. I know it's kind of confusing, but that is the process. Now, if you do end up using this shooting mode, do keep in mind that when you shoot in 4K30, you will be eating up about six gigabytes of data per minute of shooting. So make sure you have a good amount of storage should you want to shoot in this mode for an extended period of time. Now, luckily at the top, the phone will show you uh, the shooting time that you have left, like how many minutes you have left of recording. So that's another handy element that you should, uh, that should help you out when it comes to storage management with these large video files. But uh, just keep in mind, these files will be very big uh, when you shoot. So uh, definitely use this mode sparingly. Now, one last feature that Apple has improved, it's not really new, um, but they've been working on um, for the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max devices is their new cinematic shooting mode that we've actually had access to in iOS 15. And uh, what they did to improve was the AF lock and tracking feature. So now when you track an object and want to keep it in focus, the phone does a way better job at tracking that object. And it also works a little bit better now in low light as well. So overall, the cinematic mode performance is just a lot better. And I really encourage you to go back into that mode and try it again if you didn't have a good experience with it before. So guys, that's a little preview of the iOS 15.1 release and what you can expect from this release when it comes, uh, comes out very, very soon. Of course, if you have any questions or comments about today's video, please leave them in the comment section down below. And if you want to actually download and install the iOS 15.1 beta on your device today, you can check out uh, what's new for yourself. And of course, head down to the link in the video description below for more information on how to get that installed. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video on the updated YouTube channel. Before you head out, make sure to get subscribed and also hit that notification bell button to stay up to date for when we publish any new content here on the channel. Also, if you want to check out some other things that we have going on, check the channel information link down below. It's solo.to slash updated. You can check out our channel memberships, our merch store, my personal Twitter account, which you should totally follow, and a link to the updated podcast where we have new episodes every single week. That podcast is called The Infinite Loop, and we talk about everything going on in the world of tech. Also, we have links to our giveaways sponsored by awesome companies like Provado VPN, so definitely check those out as well. We'll have a new one every single month. So guys, thank you again for watching today's video and we hope to see you guys in some upcoming content. But until then, I hope you all have an awesome day.